Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video showing the good, the bad, and the ugly in my record collection. I'm going to be showing records that are good monetarily or sentimental. I'm going to be showing records that have plant defects or just a bad choice on my part. And then I've got a couple records that are just really, really ugly. And anyway, this is inspired by a contest from Brendan Van D. And if possible, I will uh, set up a link at below so you can check out his channel because he's a really nice guy and he has a great collection. I'm going to go ahead and get started with some uh, sentimental favorites. And they're pretty, I don't know if they're really valuable, they're just um, hard to find. These are picture discs of the Beatles from the 80s and I believe they were to commemorate the anniversaries of their singles releases. Beatle experts out there, you please correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, this one is Help, backed with I'm Down. And I just love the pictures of the guys. This is a very iconic Help album cover picture. So love having that. Anytime I find these, I do a little happy dance because I just don't find them very often. And anyway, I wanted to show you a few of my collection. This one is we can work it out back with Day Tripper. Just another cool picture. And I love that one with the umbrellas. Just really cool. So anyway, happy to have that one. And this one is one of my favorites. This is the Beatles Paperback Rider. And I just think that's such a cool picture of the guys. And it's backed with rain. And uh, this is the uh, infamous Butcher cover picture that they put on this disc. So I think that one is really cool. Anyway, I'm very happy to have those in my collection. And the next record I'll show is a gold stamp promo of a record that's a little bit hard to find anyway, at least in my area. This is Skid Row. This is their debut album that came out in 1989. And it's pretty hard to find since it came out in 1989. Cassettes and um, CDs were already on the way. So this has the really cool songs, Youth Gone Wild, Big Guns, and I Remember You. Here is the gold stamp on the back. So anyway, very happy to have this. This was a really good record and I really like it. If you notice the hype stickers, uh, usually on the regular records, those were on the um, shrink wrap, but because this was a promo, promo, they just directly put it on the vinyl, so or on the cover, so I will not be removing that. So anyway, this one's worth a little bit of money and I'm just really happy to have it. It's kind of unique. And this one has a very cool cover, so I wanted to show this one. This is Sweets Give Us a Wink, a really cool record from the 70s. And what makes this one really cool is it does this little wink. You can adjust this. And I always just thought that was a really cool little album cover. So anyway, Sweets Give Us a Wink. Just a unique album cover for that one. I have a story about the next one I'm going to show you. This is one of those that I never thought I would find and was shocked to find. Uh, my husband and I, uh, a while back, went into what's a bar, but it also has a record section. So I wanted to go in for the records. And we went in and, um, you know, it was a great little atmosphere that there was a little dog in there that was really adorable. And we had a really good time just looking through records. They had a little stack of record store day leftovers and I looked through them and I picked one up and my goodness, I was shocked. This is Alice Cooper's Dirty Diamonds. And this one is a very hard to find record store day release because it was limited to only 900. Um, this says limited edition record store day pressing available on vinyl for the first time ever in the United States. And it also is on a blood splatter vinyl, which I have not opened it. I've kept it sealed so far. Anyway, I was very excited to find this one and shocked. I paid $21 for it, but if you look on Discogs or eBay, they're going for a lot more money now because of the rarity of them. Uh, not every record store got one on Record Store Day, so I felt very fortunate to find this. And I have been looking. I have another friend in the vinyl community who would love to have it. And anytime I ever see any Record Store Day records, I look through. And if I would have ever found another one, I would send it his way. So kind of losing hope. I'm probably going to have to send him something else instead. But anyway, very happy to have this one. Very unique for my collection. Now I'm going to show you some records that are what I consider bad. They have record plant defects or just something, maybe a bad choice on my part. 
I'm going to start off with this one. This is a 45 of Can't You Say You Believe In Me, and it's by Boston off their third stage album. This is an actual record. This is the, the very one I picked up when I was 16 years old, and I really loved the song Can't You Say You Believe In Me at the time. And I'll show it to you because it ha the label has a mistake on it. It's supposed to appear say, Can't You Say You Believe In Me, but if you look closely, it says Can't You K, C-A-Y. So anyway, I remember getting that one and thinking, oh, that was a pretty bad little mistake. Uh, anyway, when um, Brendan asked us to show records that um, have a defect, that one immediately came to mind. Another one that came to mind in my collection is this one. It's the Beatles, 1962 through 1966. Uh, this is what they called the Red Greatest Hits album. Um, it's uh, the They have one of the uh, later Beatles songs, and it's all in a blue cover, just like this one, but it's a picture of them, and they're older, and it's a blue cover. Anyway, I bought this, and the, the final is in good shape. It plays really well, but there is something interesting about it. The labels are all blue, and I did my research, and they were supposed to be red, and I have a red vinyl copy of this, and it's red. So anyway, upon a little research, uh, what I have come to believe happened was they, um, they just made a mistake at the record plant and grabbed the blue labels and they were supposed to grab, uh, grab the red. You know, maybe, possibly, that's incorrect. Maybe they just wanted to use up some blue labels. I'm not really sure. But this was not the way it was supposed to be. These were supposed to have red labels to match the red cover. So that is a mistake and consider bad. This is, I'm going to show this one because it's just a really bad cover. I bought this um, and uh, it, at a garage sale for a dollar, just in really bad shape. The cover is really sorry looking. It's a really good album, the Bee Gees first, and I really do love the songs on it. And the, the vinyl is really cool. It's on this Atco label with the plum. So anyway, I really like the record, but I just made a really bad choice in picking one with a really bad um, damaged cover. The next one I'm going to show uh, is a very great record, but I really do believe uh, a missed opportunity. Um, I think it's got a, a defect. Um, well, not a defect, but I just think it's a bad, it was just a bad choice. Uh, this is uh, Paul McCartney and Wings. You can see the Wings sticker right here. This is Venus and Mars. For one, I've always had confusion whether I believe Paul McCartney wanted it just to be called the group Wings, but a lot of times people refer to it as Paul McCartney and Wings, but I believe it's supposed to be just Wings. And um, anyway, the way this is, it doesn't have um, the band on here, it doesn't have Paul McCartney or the band on at all, and it just says Venus and Mars really, really big. And why I think this is a bad choice or a bad mistake is that um, when I go to record stores, I almost immediately always go to the V section because I'm a huge Van Halen fan. I find this record in the V section every time, never miss. Because I think um, the people who, you know, if they're not familiar with Paul McCartney and Wings, they file this under a band called Venus and Mars. I do believe that's what happens. So anyway, this uh, is a great record and I really love the music on it. So I'm not dissing the album itself. I think it's fantastic. I do think that they either should have had a, a picture of the band or maybe made this a little bit more big, you know, prominent so people could see this is an album by Wings. The next one I'm going to show, I just think everything about the cover is wrong, wrong, wrong. And, uh, but it's a good album. And this is Peter Frampton's I'm In You. I mean, you can see he's got the little 70s outfit on, which, you know, I'm not going to complain. That's the way, that was the look at the time. He's got his shirt open, his little hairy, you know, hairy chest showing. And he's got this really seductive look on his face. And then he's got the title, I'm in you. And I just think it's kind of creepy. And I think that they could have done much better. This is a really great album. I love the song, I'm in you. It is everything to me that is right with the 70s music. The guitar work on here is phenomenal. Just a great album. But to me, it just seems like somebody would have seen this cover and thought, bad idea. So anyway, this I put this in the category as bad, but the music is great. The next two records I'm going to show are just horrific. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, anyway, this one is Dallas, The Music Story. 
I love the TV show Dallas. That's probably my all-time favorite TV show. Larry Hagman is probably my all-time favorite actor. I loved him. And this went on, this TV show went on from the late 70s all the way through the 80s into the early 90s, I think ending in 1991. So anyway, my husband found this and picked it up as kind of a joke just to surprise me. And anyway, I thought it was kind of cool because I had never seen it before. But once I started listening to it, it's just a really bad record. First off, their theme song, the Dallas' iconic theme song, was made into some kind of a disco rendition that's just really, really bad. Uh, the guy who played Ray Krebs on this show talks through a song called Who Killed Jock Ewing. It's just really bad. Howard Keel was um, a star on this show, and he did a song on here, and he's actually probably a pretty decent singer. I know he had albums. I've never made it that far, so I really honestly don't know. This is just a really, really bad record. So anyway, um, yeah, just show that one. And finally, this is the worst record I have in my collection. Everything about it is bad. This is the Easy Listening Beatles. And we have to start off with this cover. If you look, there's a woman here. She's doing the white man overbite. Uh, there's a guy over here, and I don't really know why he's dressed like that. He he looks like um, Pete, uh, like, oh, what's his name? Um, Pat Boone dressed like this for a Grammy Award one time. And I don't really know what the guy in the background is doing. Just really strange. Anyway, this music on here is really, really bad. Uh, Ray Conniff and their, the, his singers do a rendition of Yesterday and Hey Jude. They're just they're horrible renditions. There's just not a good one on here. They're just really bad. And uh, if you like this album, I'm not trying to offend you. Good for you. This is just my opinion. This is a bad record. The cover is bad. The music's bad. And I like uh, when I like Stax does the Beatles. I like um, the the motion picture soundtrack to I Am Sam. I love those renditions. I just don't like anything about this. So anyway, this is what I call the ugly. And that is my video for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and everybody have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.